Hello everyone, my name is Chris Roberts with High and Tight here in Portland, Maine. And this is Dan who's joining me today to be our model for this uh, particular video shoot. We're talking today about how the difference between using thinning shears and using a razor to, um, for hair. Um, they're very different actually from each other. Both create similar effects and different contrasts. So there's a term that we use called texture and there's also a term called thinning. Now thinning a lot of times people think like, oh, I don't want my hair to be thinned out because you're going to be taking the hair away. But the way that we're using it is in relation to the amount of hair or bulk removal is probably a better way to coin the phrase for thinning in this case. The other is texture, which is meaning do you have a, um, a flat texture or do you have an activated texture? What that's talking about basically is when you have your hair cut if you're using a regular pair of shears, for example, um, it's, a, it's a blunt, straight across cut. So all the hairs are being cut, you're taking up a section of hair, you're cutting across, and that's leaving a straight, flat cut. Almost like if you're cutting a blade of grass, and it's a nice, even, flat, straight, uh, manicured cut. If you're using thinning shears, as you notice, uh, if you're looking at the shear, and they come in different sizes, um, you'll notice that there's little grooves going into the shears. And what that's doing is it's, it's removing bulk hair from, uh, from the area that you're cutting, and it's actually taking out only pieces of hair that fall within those grooves. So you can have bigger grooves, you can have smaller grooves. Um, these are my most common shears that, that I like to use for uh, doing bulk hair removal if you're trying to thin out a section and also create a texture. So it's still going to create a, a flat edge, but it's going to remove different parts of the hair so that it lays down and it doesn't feel as heavy. It's really good if you have somebody who has thick hair. Um, an example of that, and I'll show you here on Dan's head. I'm going to kind of turn him to the side a little bit. So see, he's got, a, he, he's got very curly, wavy hair. You tend to see that a lot with folks that have curly and wavy hair. They want to remove some of the bulk because it gets unmanageable. So if we take a section of, this, of his hair, for example, hold it here, and I take my thinning shears, I go in and when I cut, it's only removing parts of the hair. It's not removing the whole section of hair that I'm going down on. So you can adjust it. You can do it for the tips. You can do it right near the base if you wanted to remove more. But as you can see, it removes less of the hair than if you're using just a regular pair of shears to cut his hair. If I'm using a razor, a key thing with a razor is, again, it has grooves. So you have a straight edge razor blade that's on the inside, and on the outer side, the section that's facing the client, you have these grooves. So anything that, any hair that falls within the grooves is what's going to be cut. What's nice with a, with a razor is that it creates what we call a jagged edge. So in, instead of being straight across, it's creating an angled edge because of the way that you're using it. Um, to create that angled edge, it um, leaves it more activated. So instead of hair just laying straight down, it lays at an angle and it tends to be the more natural way that your hair grows. Uh, a key thing with a razor though is you need to make sure that the hair is either damp or wet when you're using it uh, because if, if not, it will pull the client's head. So you always want to you know, add a little water into the picture and you can just sort of Cut down. Now like for example, if I'm using it on the top of his head, that's probably the most common place that I would use a razor of this kind of capacity. I would take a section of his hair that I wanted to create that more uh, sort of jagged edge. I would take and hold it in and you can see that the, where the sections are that it's fooling here and you just sort of pull it up. Put your thumb right against the base here and you pull up. And what's that doing is that it's cutting, but it's cutting at that jagged edge as you're pulling up, and that's going to create a very textured look rather than having it be just straight across laying flat. It's going to cut at various angles, and when it grows, it'll grow at a more natural length rather than um, growing straight across. So I hope that answers some of your questions about what's the difference between using thinning shears versus using a razor to do haircuts. My name's Chris with High and Tight here in Portland, Maine, and I look forward to talking to you again.